everyone welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast this is episode 99 my name is Hannah and I'm recording this podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia I am a Swedish expat and I live here with my husband and our two daughters this is a podcast mainly about knitting things that I knit and um, other wool and craft related things but mostly knitting really and I do have a hand dyeing business, so sometimes I share a little bit of my dyeing um, adventures on this podcast. You can find me as Rosehip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. Either of those places are a good place to contact me with a private message. Um, also, I'm always very happy if you put a comment um, down below of the video on YouTube. If you have any comments or just want to share something with me, um, what else? I think that's all. So it is rather hot today, <laughs> and I am insisting on wearing my Marshland um, jumper. It is springtime but really yesterday and today the temperatures are more like summer temperature it's like mid 20s i think and um yes it's beautiful beautiful outside it's a nice time of the year because it's still um quite green and there's lots of flowers it hasn't dried out yet like it will uh, during the summer it's school holidays here now in tasmania so i'm home with uh, both of my daughters today they're having some quiet time now in the middle of the day so I get an opportunity to record this video and um, yes I think the most exciting thing that has happened since I last recorded is that um, we had some baby chicks so we had um, we had four hens and one of them um, was broody and she was sitting on a nest underneath a conifer in our garden and we thought okay well we'll give her a chance and we'll bought some fertilized eggs put them under her and um, she was happy to sit on those and we just thought well if it if something comes out of it that's fine if not that's okay too and then one of the other hens who's the sister of the one who was broody the both light Sussex hens the other one decided that she wanted to sit next to her sister and um, hatch these eggs. So then we had two hens sitting on the same eggs. Um, I got an opportunity to get one out and see if it was there was anything in it. And it looked like it was just not fertilized. So I didn't think that we'd get anything out of it. But then on day 22, I think, and they, they hatch after about 21 days. On day 22, when I went down to have a, a check of the chickens and see that they had water and things like that, there was a little baby chick. And then, yes, at the end, that was on the weekend, and it's Thursday today, so it's been a few days now, and we have four baby chicks, and they're living under this conifer with their two mothers, and they are very, very cute. And I'm happy the weather is very nice and warm because I'm hoping that will increase the survival um, chances. Uh, but it's still very early on, so who knows. But we have three black chicks and one yellow chick, or blonde as my daughter says. <laughs> and they are crosses of Light Sussex and Orpington and Light Sussex and Austral, I think. I don't really know much about chickens really um, so we'll see what happens with that but um, I have some footage and stuff of course so um, I'll share that with you ok 
Okay, so, um, summer holidays, we're almost halfway through. I did go on a quick trip to Hobart with my husband. I left the children with their grandmother and um, I had just two half days to myself um, while my husband worked and that was great. So I had a bit of um, time in the car and I decided that I was not going to be um, indulging myself and just do a lot of knitting. I was going to weave in the ends on my marshland. So the night before we left, I thought, okay, I want to wear my marshland when we go to Hobart. I better weave in the, the ends. So I watched an episode of Glitch. So that was about an hour and I did not even get, get halfway through the ends and then I decided, okay, I'll weave them in in the car on the way down to Hobart and that's about two and a half to three hour trip. So during that time, my husband, he drove and um, I was weaving in ends and I think I lost count at about 50 ends, um, but I did weave them all in and it was all finished before we arrived in Hobart and I was able to change into the marshland to spend a day in Hobart wearing this um, beautiful jumper. So I guess that's what I need. I need um, a reason or a place to wear my knitted items to make me weave in the ends. And now it's super hot to wear it, but I am still going to do it. <laughs> So I had some lovely me time in Hobart and um, yes, some nice knitting time in the hotel room um, on the second day before we left again and uh, yes, it's lovely. Um, and now we are going to do some um, road trips with the kids as well before school's back on. So I might be able to share some of that with you next time I record. Today I have um, a lot of knitting to share with you. I have done a little bit of recording of some dyeing that I did. If you see these skeins up here, I recorded and just a, a tiny little bit, some snippets um, when I was dyeing them. So I'll, I'll share that with you at the end or towards the end of the episode after I share with you um, some knitting that I have been doing and I also have some new magazines so I might at least um, share one of them with you. Before we get into all of the knitting content I wanted to um, see if you would be interested or if you would think it was fun and um, to have as seeing that next episode is episode 100 which i think is pretty amazing i thought i should make it a little bit special and a bit different and i know that a lot of podcasts they have like q a episodes where uh, viewers have put questions in comments or in the Ravelry group or just emailed or sent questions in some way to the podcast and those questions are answered in an episode. So I thought um, I can do that as a part of my 100th ep episode. So if you have any questions, any questions about me, my background or what I'm doing now or about my knitting or about my hand dyeing business, anything, of course I, um, I will answer what I can and what I feel comfortable with answering. Um, but I thought it would be fun. If you want to know a little bit more about me or about the podcast or the hand dyeing, um, I thought this would be a fun fun excuse for a, um, a bit of a Q&A section in the podcast. So next podcast is episode 100 and I, yes, we'll, we'll do that. If you have anything you want me to talk about, let me know. And uh, I think in next episode, because it's episode 100, I'm also going to have some special discount or special deal in my shop. So don't miss the next episode, episode 100. Another thing that I have been thinking about and I have been wanting to do for a while is to record an episode in Swedish. Uh, it's, a, it's not something that I think I want to do 
for e every episode in English and I'm not I think doing the subtitles is going to be too much work so I just thought I want at least want to do one episode in Swedish so that might be coming up so if you see if you subscribe and it comes up a video and I would make I'll make sure to it won't have a number on the episode it will just have something about the Swedish in the title so if that comes up um, that's what that is that's what that's if I get the time and <laughs> and yes to record an episode in Swedish so that might happen just so you don't get confused I thought I'd let you know <laughs> okay let's get into what I have been working on what I have been knitting because that's what I have been doing first up and while I talk about this I also talk about the knit along that I am hosting in the Ravelry group I completed these socks they are just plain vanilla socks that are made with an afterthought heel and these are my Northern Territory entry to the 2019 Aussie Dyer Sock Along which is a sock along that I'm hosting in the Ravelry group for this podcast, Rose Hip Knits podcast on Ravelry and um, in that knit along we are trying to complete as many projects as we can from indie dyed yarn from the different states and ter territories in Australia. This yarn here is from Queen Bee Yarns and she's in Darwin so I purchased that for my Northern Territory entry. I used the contrast heel and toe and that's my dandy sock on a, see I have, I, I didn't name this colourway, orange cup coral I think was the name of it. Sometimes when I uh, name colourways I look at what colours are in the skein and I google those colours and search images <laughs> and sometimes I find things that They look a bit like the yarn so that's what I named the colorway and this was the orange cup coral this color looked like so that's what I named the colorway so there's those socks and um, yep, just normal plain socks I finished them a while ago so I can't really remember much about them I just know that I made them cuff down afterthought heel it was quite a thick sock yarn this so I didn't have many stitches yes, I think they're pretty cool came out a bit different but that's just good did I weave in the ends? I think I, oh no, didn't weave in the ends yet I was going to say they look a little bit like Halloween socks they would be good for Halloween maybe but then I have to weave in the ends first <laughs> that's dope one other thing that I have completed that is also an entry in the 2019 Aussie Dye Sock Along is this cowl, this amazing cowl. This is the Ataraxia Cowl by Vicky Vera, who is Mia Demo, I think, a Swedish designer, and she's also a hand dyer. There is, this is a brioche um, pattern. So you, if you have watched my podcast before, you would have seen this a few times because I was working on it for quite some time. It was not exactly rela relaxing, mindless knitting. It took a little bit of focusing. And I kept being distracted by other things. But um, this is my South Australia entry into the Aussie Dyer Sock Along. This yarn is from Finch Yarns. It's a hot pink colorway and then it's sort of a gray with pops of neon colors. I used uh, pink as the main color and the gray as the contrast. And it is, it's a um, single merino yarn and it's very soft and lovely. And it just sits beautiful. At first I thought, oh, this, I don't know about the length of this. You never know when you make a cow, do you? It's a bit hard to know. 
um, but this one sits really nicely on on the neck so I think the day after I finished it I wore it at work and I thought I would only wear it sort of going in and then it would get too too warm but no my work is not a warm place so I wore it all day and I loved it it's great so that's that one I'm so happy to have it completed it's one of those um, projects I thought oh that I'm just never going to feel the motivation to finish it but I had a few um, like a week here and there where I worked on it quite a bit and in between that I had breaks doing other things and when I was getting closer to finishing it I could just see how beautiful it would be and I was yes I really wanted to have it done I think I used about half a skein of each of the colours. Hmm. So, of course, it will not really be cold enough to wear this much now until autumn. But at least I have it ready and my needles are free for other things. So that's good. So that's those two for the... 2019 Aussie Dyer sock along. So as you can see, it doesn't it doesn't have to be socks. It can be anything. <laughs> and that's what I have finished, which I I think is pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I forgot to say that the yarn that I used for the marshland is um, from spinning spinning yarn weaving tails. Or the other way around I always forget uh, it's the mull yarn it's I think it is the same as the Holst super soft so it's a 100% um, light fingering um, wool yarn so I held that double and uh, yes worked really well and it is a little bit tight here and after I wove in all the ends because it was like 10 ends just in this section that sort of added a bit to the tightness anyway it's great I love it I love it then I have been of course working on a few things as well and I have one thing that has a deadline because it's the test knit and I have one thing that is part of a knit along but I'm not too worried about finishing the items before the knit along finishes I'll start with the test knit and the test knit is the Flucy 2 jumper for Libby Johnson um, Truly Myrtle and I showed this last time I can't remember where I was up to last time I have about two thirds of a sleeve left and then this will be finished so this is a test and this is the Flucy 2 which is the jumper version of the Flucy cardigan that Libby made a while back. I am using, oh, I only have the one skein here now, uh, this is Karoa Fibres which is a natural um, light brown coloured wool that has been hand dyed. That's the sort of the natural colour here that I have on the cone there. I purchased this at the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show. Let's see if I have the label. It's not a very good label. Karoa fibers. Excuse my fingers, I've been dying this morning. Uh, yes, so this is mosaic knitting. I did find some of it a bit challenging to get it right. Um, I have really enjoyed making it, but I like the experience, but I think I do prefer stranded knitting. I do. So if I was going to make, at least for a colour work yoke jumper, I think I prefer stranded knitting. At the same time, there's some parts of it, like this, this bit here, that I can see using for a, a, for a jumper. But, uh, yes, I'm not sure. It was it was fun and interesting to do it, but I think I enjoy stranded colour work more. Which is fine, which is fine. I um 
really like how the colors are working up and um, I will have quite a bit left quite a bit left so I don't know what I'm going to do with that hmm. so we'll see if it's uh, cool enough to be wearing this next time because I have to have this finished in about two weeks for the test knit so next time I record it should be all finished you can see all my sleeve decreases there where I've marked them I've I uh, really enjoy working with this yarn. It's quite a light fingering weight and I'm working on the two millimeter needles so it is um, quite fine. When I was working on the body I calculated that doing one round on the body equal making four rounds on a sock. <laughs> so I could have yes, knitted a few pairs of socks I think but I'm going to enjoy this this jumper more than more socks. I'm really happy with the colours and they're quite different to what I normally go for. I hmm. don't know what else to say about it really. It is beautiful. And I'm so happy that Livy decided to make a jumper version of the Flucy because I didn't really want to make a cardigan <laughs> but I really so I like the look of it still. Hmm. I did do helical knitting with three strands of this mustard coloured on the body but then for the sleeve I decided I was just going to use the one skein for that sleeve and then I'm using another skein for this one and I think it will be fine. Yeah. I can't wait to wash it and block it think that will change it a bit yeah. lovely I'm very happy with it but because I I started up the sleeve before I went to Hobart and I did that bit on the second sleeve um, during the knitting time that I had in the hotel room so and then a little bit um, on the way home in the car I felt like okay I have this under control now I will be able to finish this in time without any problem so then I allowed myself to um, uh, do some other other things and I will show you that later but first I'll show you the other project that I shared with you last time and this is the knit along that I am um, taking part is and this is for the um, Sticklinger podcast which is a Swedish knitting podcast on YouTube and they are doing a knit along for Ulinas Vanta which is a mitten pattern by Anita Wiksten and I am using two skeins of Gotland hand dyed Gotland yarn that I've also purchased at the Ben Nigo Sheep and Wool show and I don't think I'm much further than last time I haven't really worked on them much I did have them with me in my handbag when I was walking around in Hobart so I did have a little bit of time having a cup of tea in a cafe doing a few few rounds on them. I had to modify them a bit. I've started doing the decreases now for the top of the hand or the fingers and um, I had to modify it and start those decreases a bit earlier. I don't have very large hands and if I'd continued um, the whole shard there would have been way too long and the pattern does state that you know um, modify it to fit the length of your hand so that's those ones I think they will change quite a bit when I block them this yarn is very much um, thick and thin and a bit underspun in, in places which gives it lovely character but when you do the color work before you've blocked it I think it makes it a bit look a bit messy and muddled so I have to do the decreases there then make another one then make the thumbs I don't even know that the knit along might even have finished by now I don't know I don't know why I don't feel totally motivated on knitting <laughs> mittens 
Maybe because I don't really wear them and maybe because it's spring and it's warm. Now let's see. Okay, so then because I felt like I had things under control with my deadlines and everything, I started looking for new things to make. To make. I looked at my queue in Ravelry and you know, I'm always daydreaming about new projects and thinking about what's in my stash and I have all my stash in Ravelry and I have a queue there in my library and I'm constantly trying to match things and you know, thinking about knitting I guess makes me happy and that's my you know, happy place, safe place so I tend to do that a lot which is not always a good thing. Anyway, what one thing that I had been thinking about doing for a long time was um, Hui Scarpa. It's a children's jumper that has been designed by Madeleine Lind... What's her? Madeleine Lindostam. She's uh, one of the, um, the girls that do one of the Swedish audio podcasts, The Contact, and she also works for a Swedish yarn company. So she designed this jumper for the yarn company. And it's called Huiskapa, Skyscraper, I guess. It's available both in Swedish and in English on yabu.se. <laughs> and um, I wanted to make it, but I've been hesitating to do anything for my daughters lately because I feel like I have had so many jumpers and knitted items that I've been having to give away and not really knowing what to do with special items that I can't just give away and so I found it hard to make more of those special items because it's so hard when they grow out of them but my my youngest daughter she really loves wearing the things that I've made for her or I haven't really made them for her a lot of them are made for her older sister and she didn't really wear them but now my younger daughter she really enjoys wearing them she will ask for the cardigan that I made to wear in the morning so that's that's lovely and um, I thought okay well she, I know that she will wear something that I make and I had in my stash um, this yarn I'll show you Bella baby layette which is the 80% bamboo and 20% wool and I bought this when my youngest was a baby I made a few items, a few baby items out of it, and I really, really liked it. It's nice and soft for sensitive skin. It holds up really well. Um, so when I found it on sale uh, in Spotlight in Australia, I purchased a few different colours. And because my children were only had, I only had my eldest then, because you know, her size didn't, require a lot of yardage or many meters of yarn I bought a lot of that um, but only maybe a hundred grams for each color and I have I have used it a bit I'll show you one of the items I have made you see so this is a variegated one of that yarn and then a pink so this my daughter she wears this now sometimes and I think I based this on the garter yoke baby cardigan I think it's called so it knits up really nice and it, it's it is quite heavy so when it is larger sizes it feels quite heavy in smaller sizes it feels okay but that's one of the things I had and then I have all this um, all these colors of this yarn and it's just been sitting in my stash and I haven't been knowing what to do with it because I don't have enough of any color really but it's nice but then I had almost decided I was just going to give it away but then these patterns free scalper came up and I thought well maybe that's something I can use it for um, so I had I think 250 grams of this it's a DK weight of this pink one and then I have two skeins of the light pink or two balls cakes whatever I, have, I think I have a few of a white I have 
two of this rainbow one it's slightly different to the one that I just showed you and then some sort of greyish color and this other variegated in lighter colors so I had I mean I had plenty in total so I knew that I had enough of this yarn to make the jumper in some sort of um, arrangement um, I might be able to show or have shown a an image of, of what the jumper looks like um, so you can see that it it takes one main color and four contrast colors in the color work on the body and the sleeves so on the night when I returned back from Hobart I decided that I wanted to have a break from my Flusa 2 and do some fun and colourful knitting, quick knitting and I cast on this jumper and I decided to do the largest size in the pattern and I don't know really what age it is, it's 140 um, in European or Swedish sizes I don't actually know if that I think that's like based on the height of the chop 140 centimeters tall but I'm, I'm not sure anyway I cast on the largest size of this jumper to make sure that hopefully it will fit and it will be okay next winter So let's see. So I have been working on this a bit. I have had two nights to work on it. And here it is. So I used that pink for the main colour. And now I have started on the colour work. I'm only halfway in using this one here. A bit hard to see maybe. So it'd be quite fun to use the variegated. I'm not sure which order to do the other colours. I wanted to include this quite strong variegated, but I think that it will uh, stand out too much with the other colours. So I think I might do just those lighter colours in the variegated. Then the problem is that I have started with that variegated. I'm not sure. I'll just see how I go when I uh, sort of get to the next section, next colour section. I think in the largest size, if this is a free pattern, it's on the blog. Um, in the pattern, the largest size has 15 rounds of this colour work before you change in this up two other colours that you alternate, or it's the contrast with the new contrast. Um, I was thinking that maybe I should just do half the length of the repeats but then repeat them I might I might do that I'm not sure anyway I have started on that and it feels really good it feels like a really nice garment and ho I've, I've tried it on her now and it does it does fit and I know that it has a bit of stretch in it so I'm I'm, I'm sure it will be fine for autumn or next winter but it, it's been a really nice um, change from working on those sort of darker colors in really fine yarn these are you know it's colorful it's thick it's yeah it's totally different feeling and it's nice to have the variation working on different things I think so that's the new thing that I've sort of started up and I've been a little bit obsessed with making. Uh, and that's the things that I have been working on. When I was in Hobart, I thought I would um, treat myself to a, not a, really a souvenir, but just treat myself to something. And I don't really need any more yarn at the moment. And I didn't actually go to, oh, I did go to a wool shop. I did, but I didn't buy anything. But I did go to a news agent and I found this one and I was drawn to it immediately because of this um, tea on the 
cover. This is issue 139 of the Nita. I don't even don't know much about it. I think it's a UK magazine, but I'm not sure. It seems like the a lot of the uh, different like the events guide and different um, what are they called? stories and stuff in here is all based in the UK look I found I saw a floosie here where was that from Wonder, Wonderwall in Wales hmm. anyway um, I was drawn to that one and that's actually a pattern from Nuvita and I think I've talked about Nuvita before it's a, a Finnish yarn company and they have a special sort of fold out I don't know a spotlight about Nuvita so there's a little bit of a story about that company and there is this um, pattern that you know it's, it's written for a Nuvita yarn of course you know you can use any fingering weight yarn and I have been in search for a something a top that I can make for myself that uses three different colors um, yes and I wanted to do a an all-over color work so I had a look at this and yes in my size you only need a hundred grams of four no of three different colors and I have that I know exactly the yarn the yarn I want to use for this tea is my tweed yarn from Cola Girl Collective so I have been looking for something to make out of these and I know that 300 grams of a fingering weight is enough for me to make a jumper but it was just how to mix them together and I didn't really want to color block or fade so I had been thinking about if I could find something uh, where I could do an all-over color work so I could use all three uh, skeins to a maximum and make a garment so I think yes I'll, I'll be making that from those skeins I think that might work or somehow um, use it as a, a guide for what I want to do and um, the other thing that it was that but only one pattern in magazine it's not normally enough for me to buy it but I also saw this one which I just really really love and I think it is it's made using Jameson and Smith yarn I just I just really love it's probably the colors also that make me feel like it's so nice I'm not sure about the actual style of it um, the the sleeves and it's you no know, cropped and wide I don't know if I can like that um, and then when I looked at it it has a bit of knitting back and forth not only in the round and um, but I, I might still make it and I might use just a colour work in something something else. So I really like those two patterns. So I thought it was worth buying the magazine for that. I can't remember if there was anything else in here that I... Oh, there was another one. This one, which is another Nuvita pattern. Um, I think it's one of the designers that work for Nuvita. I love that. So that's a thicker style colour work jumper. Yeah. I would love to make that too. Hmm. Then there are others that are just not really, not really my style at all. Don't no something I feel like I want to make or this one I feel like I've seen these 
before. Like, yeah. Nice, but not really what I would make for myself. So Zenita, I treated myself to. Let's see if I make anything out of them, out of that anytime soon. <laughs> but I do want to work. I do want to use these skeins. They're, um, yeah. They're probably next for me. Something for me. Okay, so I think the rest of this episode I'll be talking about dyeing. So as I mentioned, I have a hand dyeing business called Rosehip Island. You can find that on Etsy. I still have not moved from Etsy to my own website, but it's probably something I should look into um, a bit more. <laughs> I just need to find a time for it. Uh, so yes, I, I, have an hand, I have a hand dyeing business. I sell my yarn on Etsy. And... Um, I've been I've had pre-orders for advent calendars they're all sold out thank you so much to those of you who purchased an advent calendar from me this year they're all dyed and ready they're just a matter of packaging and sending them off it's still only first days of October so I want to have them ready to go but I don't want to send them out too early you know, temptation <laughs> opening, but I have a few overseas ones that I need to get out there fairly quickly, so that's, that's going to happen soon. But when I have been dying up these advent calendars, I've had some minis um, left, and I had some minis. Uh, this year's mini skeins are different to last year's mini skeins, and I had. A few they're the same there's 80% merino 20% nylon the same thing but they're from different mills so I had some mini skeins left from last year but not enough to make advent calendars of them so that's why I took the opportunity to buy this um, this base from a different um, spinning mill where I, I buy a lot of my bases Anyway, I still have those other ones um, from last year undyed. So when I was sort of in the grove and dyeing minis, I decided to dye a 12 days of Christmas. And I haven't really, I haven't, I haven't advertised this anywhere or talked about it anywhere. Um, but I did dye up 12 different colorways for 12 days of Christmas. I only have a very limited number, I only have five. And um, they are, what can we say, paint box inspired. I think I'll call them my paint box 12 days of Christmas, <laughs> maybe. Um, so yes, I think, you know, crayons and paint and yes. Um, so they're all semi-solid tonals um, and they all know, go uh, nicely together. So I was, uh, and I still haven't decided this. I don't know if I'm going to wrap them up and have them as, you know, individually packaged 12 days of Christmas in a bag that you can purchase, not knowing what they look like, or if I should just make a set of 12 mini skeins. Um, if there's more interest when you can actually see what you buy. I haven't decided yet what to do. If you have any thoughts about that, let me know. <laughs> I think I'll I'll still get all of the advent calendars out first, and then I will um, just uh, I will list these twelve days of Christmas, and they're not pre-orders because they're already dyed up and everything, so they're ready to ship. So I can do that a bit closer to Christmas, I guess. I'm not waiting too long though. But that's what's happened. I've been happening in the dye pots. I've been dyeing a lot of minis also taking a lot of time in labeling and on those things for the advent calendar i have dyed up a lot of my delicious socks still to be listed there's a lot of new stuff in the shop since last i recorded i think i have a whole heap in the dye pots today i've had a um, wholesale order so i've been dying that up today and um what I did also was 
that I recorded a little bit of me doing some dyeing of these skeins up here and I'll, I'll just show you snippets of the dyeing and then we can talk about the skates.
I decided to do was a bit of an experiment and just for fun was to dye four different colorways that have some different methods or techniques. I didn't really do anything very um, sort of detailed or I was holding my phone taking video so it was just you know nothing exact no exact measurements or anything but I did sort of different techniques for the four different colorways and then I had four different yarn bases for each colorway one of them and I'll show this this is um, a base that I got in just um, out of curiosity to try this is 100% superwash polworth uh, so I'd, I'd say it's, it's a sock yarn no nylon sock yarn it is superwash but um, yes a polworth is meant to be a bit hardier than say merino and not having nylon with it should work okay I dyed up this in just the blue which is some leftover dye that I had in a pot um, because I want to I want to try to make socks out of this for me and see how that goes So I had the Polworth, I'll, I'll get the first, or one of the colourways out. This is one of the colourways I did. Another base that I got in, this is the Polworth that I just talked about. Another base that I got in just to try was a high twist um, merino nylon sock yarn. You can see how it, the texture of it, you can see it applies. And then I also dyed it on my single uh, ply merino, superwash merino, and on my delicious sock, which is an 8020 uh, merino nylon. So I used those four bases for all the colorways. And this one, um, I have to try to remember what I actually did because it was a while ago. <laughs> They've been sitting here waiting for me to record. Um, this one was a bit of a, um, a pouring, pouring in different colours in the pot and layering that way and glazing with the grey a bit. So they variegated but in not very different colours I'd say. Oh it's hard to show. Maybe I should show. Just two. So they're blues and black. And then another colourway that I did with is pouring different colours on. And from memory I had like a bright pink, bright yellow. And was it a blue? I think so. Pouring on and letting the colours sort of mix a bit in, in the water. And they um, they blended up quite a bit. So this is a single ply, the high twist sock yarn, the delicious sock, and the Polworth. And you can see that with this, the colours have muddled together quite a bit. You still get some bright colours in places. But mostly they have muddled to together as a sort of a pale murky green. Which makes them more even to knit up than if there are all those different colours are in very defined spots. That they'll be more variegated. So that was that one. And then I did one with just a one... Uh, pink color oh, they're blowing out a bit the uh, tonal oh, I can't really see but they have lighter and darker pink so that's the single high twist sock delicious sock and the Polworth and you can see that they're not they're all with superwash wool so they take the color quite you know the same 
same way. And I just did different ways of adding the colour and making sure that I got some variation in there and um, and just layering colours in different ways, like with pouring colours, different colours on top and letting them mix together. Or with the next one I'll show you, this one here was a, um, first a blue that I then over dyed with a second colour to get these. So here's the single ply, the high twist merino, the Polworth, and the delicious sock. And yeah, the colours are coming out a bit weird on here, but I, I've taken video of them. So yes, this was all emer emerge in a pot, added colour, added the yarn, and then I did a second layer of colour after the first colour was absorbed. This one just has the pink colours, but still has quite a bit of variation which you can't really see. And then this one I've added, drop one, added colours and let them mix together and with this method um, if you have a bit of control and you know how your colours and amount of water and everything how that will react you can have quite good control over how much the colours will mix and you can get quite different results depending on how much water you have and um, what type of pigments you mix and then there's this sort of softer variegated the blues and greys so I, I had lots of fun dyeing those from the different bases and they'll be listed in the shop at some point because I can't I can't use them all myself <laughs> so hopefully the little snippets of video will sort of show you a little bit how how I, I did those but yes just very different ways of, of adding color and different results and um, just fun to try new bases and compare them to my regular bases really okay I think that's all for this episode and remember next time is episode 100 100 so when did I start it must be getting getting towards four years I think early next year when my daughter has turned six, is it four years or is it five years? Might, might be five years next year. Oh my gosh. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, <laughs> next episode is episode 100. Uh, so I want to make that special. Please, if you have any ideas what I should do or what to talk about, any questions I can answer, let me know in the comments. Send me a message in Ravelry or on Instagram or on YouTube um, and I will do what I can <laughs> to make next episode special. And yes, there will be some, some sort of special deal or discount or something for you to be able to help celebrating with me. And that's all. I have one last thing that I want to just make short, but I don't know if I can. I have been thinking about the ads on YouTube a lot. And recently when um, Ali of um, Little Drops of Wonderful decided to turn on the ads on her videos, it made me think more about it I've, I've sort of been thinking I know it's not worth doing it for any sort of revenue not for me I wouldn't be able I wouldn't really make anything from it so I've always thought no 
um, I won't turn the ads on because it will irritate people and it won't make any difference to me. But lately I have thought that maybe having the ads on actually makes a difference in how visible you are on YouTube. I have a feeling that you'd be recommended more or yes, just be more visible. That YouTube makes you more visible on the platform if you have your ads turn on and I don't know if it gives you more editing um, things you can do to the videos so I thought I wanted to just try to turn the ads on but I don't want to scare anyone away first I thought no I have a hand dyeing business the if I talk about my hand dyed yarn, I shouldn't have ads on and this is something that I do for fun, I don't want to have pressure on, that if I have ads, people think that it's a money earning thing so I should keep some, you know, standard. Um, but then when I've, most videos that I watch have ads and everything from really large hand dyeing businesses that obviously have it as a part of promoting their products they have ads on and then this you know the smallest little youtuber with not many subscribers of views and they have ads on so I think I just really don't know what to think about ads on YouTube anymore I think they're so common now that at least I don't really think much about it anymore it's only if I like the last week or so I've I've made a mental note when I've started watching a video what video it is what youtuber what size youtuber <laughs> or you know podcaster they are and if they have ads on or not um, but I, I would like to try to turn them on and just to see if that makes any difference in views and um, if it gives me more tools in editing or something like I don't know I, I really don't know but I thought the easiest way to find out more about <laughs> what might happen or not happen or what the difference is is to actually turn on the ads and just see so I I think I will do that it feels like a big step to take because I have you know 99 episodes now and I've always said this is something that I do just for me, for fun. And um, yes, I don't want to have any sort of pressure. But they're just little ads and they're on everything on YouTube now. So I think, yes, I will give it a go. So there might be, might be that you have seen ads at the start of this episode. If I haven't had the guts to do it for this episode, I'll do it <laughs> for the next one. Please, I don't mind if you tell me um, or comment that ads make me, you know, unsubscribe straight away. Please don't do it. Let me know because if you don't tell me, I don't know if there's people out there that really disagree with having ads on. So, yes, comment and let me know. That's all for this time. I think I've added so many things now that was, you know, more than I had planned. Um, thank you so much for watching. Next time is episode 100. Come back for that, please. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thumbs up always makes my day. And that's it. So have a, a wonderful day, evening, week, time until I see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the cute, chic videos. If I have posted it already or you know otherwise it will come after this um, so I hope you enjoyed thank you so much for watching okay that's it for this time bye take care